Hey, welcome back to the Ping Pong Flick Show. My name is Chris Wong. This is episode 414 of the Ping Pong Flick Show. Let's get with some, very little, but some DCEU updates. Now, this is an article that I want to read to you. This is coming from the Hollywood Reporter. And this is in concerns in regards to Joker and Martin Scorsese. Because I think I remember a while back that Martin Scorsese was going to produce Joker, which is interesting uh, seeing that his comments about the MCU were very interesting, to say the least. How Martin Scorsese paved the way for Joker. The Irishman Helmer initially was involved as a producer on the DC villain blockbuster and may even have eyed it to direct. Martin Scorsese raised the hackles of Marvel fans when he recently told Empire Magazine that the franchise isn't the cinema of human beings trying to convey emotional psychological experiences to another human being. But it turns out he saw cinematic potential in the DC Universe. The Irishman Helmer was involved with Joker, which opened in the U.S. to $96 million over October 4 to 6, an October record. As a producer, when the project was first unveiled by Warner Brothers in 2017 with Todd Phillips directing, although he eventually dropped the credit, his contribution has been a mystery. A source close to Scorsese tells The Hollywood Reporter he originally eyed Joker as a potential directing vehicle before Phillips approached the studio with his own take on the nihilistic villain. Warner Brothers declined to comment. While Scorsese's rep says he had no intention to direct Joker and only considered producing. In 2016, Phillips pitched former Warner's chief Kevin Sujihara and former production co-president Greg Silverman his original idea that would stand alone from the interconnecting DC film storylines featuring Superman, Batman and Wonder Woman. Toby Emmerich, now Warner's film chief, loved the script co-written by Phillips and Scott Silver, but questioned whether it needed to live in the DC Universe at all, lest it be dubbed dark, like the label that was then sticking to its movies. Sujihara and Emmerich greenlit Joker, which cost less than $70 million, leaving Jared Leto, who played Joker in Suicide Squad, alienated and upset by the move. Around the same time as Phillips pitched, Scorsese began focusing his attention on Irishmen. As stars Robert De Niro and Al Pacino committed and the de-aging technology had finally caught up with the director's vision. A Warner's source says Scorsese was enlisted simply because the movie needed a producer based in New York where Joker filmed. But that explanation doesn't square with Scorsese's filmography in which he typically takes a producing credit on projects he originally develops with an eye to direct like the long gestating the devil in the white city which is migrating to tv or else to lend his support to up and coming indie filmmakers like the safdie brothers uncut gems joker would fit into neither category instead scorsese quietly left the comic book based film and his producing partner emma tillinger koskoff took over joker producing duties and rolled over most of the crew from Irishmen to work on Joker. De Niro also straddled both films. Although it has been speculated that Scorsese initially was brought into the mix to entice his frequent collaborator Leonardo DiCaprio, multiple sources says that is not true, and Phoenix was the only actor considered by Phillips. For his part, Phillips turned down other comics-based films uh, in the wake of his Hangover trilogy success because he found them to be loud. But Joker's homicidal protagonist managed to entice both Phillips and Scorsese. Critics have no noted that Joker borrows from Scorsese's Taxi Driver and The King of Comedy. Ironically, Scorsese and Phillips will likely be battling one another in this year's awards season race given the reviews both Irishmen and Joker have mustered to date. That is interesting. So, now, what I get from this is that, one, Martin Scorsese was gonna almost going to do a DC uh, or produce a DC com So, a DC Universe. So, hey, maybe he's a DC shill. <laughs> he's a DC fan. Uh, not a Marvel fan. But, you know, uh, whatever. Um, that's cool. Uh, uh, Martin Scorsese is uh, one of the greatest directors of all time. Uh, and so, it's crazy that Marvel fans are teasing him saying what movie has he ever directed come on grow up but uh, Martin Scorsese 
I remember, I just kind of really remember that he was in uh, one of the names in terms of either producing or directing Joker. Um, and it seemingly, it, it, it may have just been a producing role. Uh, and then he kind of quietly walked out because he had to do other things as well. Um, which is, you know, all right. But just to know uh, that he was about to be producing a DC Universe film, it's, it's just cool. Uh, you know, it just shows that he he can recognize that the, this movie can go above and beyond a typical roller coaster ride of a movie and and have some a depth and uh, uh, artistic flavor in a creative driven uh, aspect to it uh, that it, that that is not in uh, a Marvel film but um, what I can also see here, which is interesting, is the fact how Phillips had pitched uh, this in 2016. Uh, and this 2016 pitch was to Kevin Sujihara and at that time, Greg Silverman. Now, Greg Silverman, an executive at that time, uh, was responsible for kind of uh, being involved with uh, uh, Man of Steel, uh, Batman v Superman, even Justice League uh, to a certain extent. And... Uh, and it kind of shows you that time what they're the kind of things that they were um, the kind of scripts they were being approached to and and Todd Phillips approaching this team uh, with that is very interesting indeed that means they were kind of really open to the idea of like more director driven films and ideas like that uh, until you know Greg Silverman went away uh, Toby Emmerich got involved and it says right here that they're very concerned about that dark subject matter uh, and because of what happened with BVS and stuff. So um, I thought that was kind of interesting, and it kind of makes me wonder if, if if Greg Silverman was still involved and they didn't have Toby Emmerich and maybe Suji Hara didn't really care too much about it, that we would have got Justice League made completely uh, along with everything else with that. I'm not sure. Um, it just it just seems like it, it would have been a better uh, environment for um, Zack Snyder at that time. But who knows? Uh, but I'm glad that Joker was able to be made and be, probably because it only cost less than $70 million, they greenlit it anyway because it was like, already in the works and they're trying to get something in there um and uh, we'll see but uh we'll see if they make any more from uh, from this hit uh, that joker is right now but i thought that was kind of cool to uh let you know about martin scorsese uh and that how it just appears like uh, he's more in favor for of course he is because he's the director himself like director driven films things that the studio doesn't really tamper with doesn't really um take away from and that he can uh, you know the directors can make the movie they want movies that have a depth and meaning to it uh and it seems like because dc is not in marvel or disney they're able to go to great lengths to make it rated r great lengths to make it controversial divisive uh and and it with every not really uh, you know the director never really intended to be sometimes they do but it's something that they want to make what they want to make and a lot of people are not going to agree with what, what they want to make but it becomes you know like like things like joker it becomes a hit uh and maybe even this controversy uh for joker actually made it more of a hit than what it could have been who knows but uh it, it is kind of uh really I, I hope martin scorsese actually will produce or even direct a dc film from here on out i mean i think in terms of marvel and disney i think for creative like uh, um you know artistic uh directors uh you know people there there's more chances that these auteurs can actually make a movie in dc rather than marvel if they keep it up if they keep continuing to let the directors make the movies they want uh and if todd uh, toby not todd right toby emmerich uh will allow this to happen and uh, i i hope he does i hope he's changed his tune i hope he's learned from joker's success that they could potentially make more movies like this um the next movie is birds of prey of course is coming out and people are wondering you know after all the trailers and stuff is this is this really exciting is people getting excited uh for this movie according to imdb pro it appears so right now it's actually trending after the trailer hit a trending movie meter to a number two spot 
Bot, which is uh, incredibly cool, and star power Margot Robbie and Mary Elizabeth Winstead had shot up in their star meter to three for Margot Robbie and a nine for Mary Elizabeth Winstead. And this is in the, like in the top five thousands now. I mean, this is all the celebrities, and they actually went up. They're actually going up in their ranking. Uh, and I think that is crazy cool. And I think I, I, I'm really happy for them, and I'm really happy for Birds of Prey. Um, I hope this actually translates to a great big box office. Uh, this is a rated R movie, so it, it's something, this is something that Marvel cannot do in the cinema uh, aspect of the universe. Uh, they cannot go rated R. They cannot have swearing. Uh, and hopefully, Birds of Prey has some type of depth to it. And we know we've only seen a trailer uh, and we've seen a teaser and we haven't really seen um, a lot from it, but I'm feeling like it, it will have something a little bit deeper than what we're seeing on the surface right now. And that's just me uh, just judging by Kathy Ann's uh, work from before. Not that I've seen the whole movie, but what I've heard of it, read reviews of it, um, and I hope they even bring it here. Uh, but uh, I, I'm... I'm judging from that and with the uh, you know, incredible action directed by Chad Stileski, uh, I think it's going to be something really special. And I, I can't wait to see Birds of Prey. Now, the next thing up is not DC per se, but it could be something in for the future of entertainment uh, for Warner Brothers and even, you know, DC animated movies, DC Universe, maybe even some DC films that may be coming along the way. Uh, then this uh, streaming service is called HBO Max, and they just kind of launched uh, their Twitter account. They just kind of started uh, not too long ago, a few days ago, and it's available now. I'm following it now. You guys can follow it as well. This is probably where we're going to start announcing things on their channel, their service, what they're going to do with that. And it just gets a little bit closer to possibly where they're going to reveal what they're going to, what what kind of um, pricing, what kind of subscription features, and even like uh, product demos, uh, maybe even a package telling you what's going to be on there, maybe a whole thing about that. And um, I know they said a couple things before about HBO Max. They, they, uh, uh, they talked about it a little bit, but I just want to go back to this article from Deadline. Uh, Warner Media, HBO Max, reveal date set, live sports, news confirmance elements, and there's an update on this. This was in July of 24 of 2019. But AT&T has scheduled its big reveal of HBO Max details, presumably covering pricing, subscription features, and product demos for the afternoon of October 29 on the Warner Brothers lot in Burbank. Now that is uh, cons it's really close. It's coming soon. Uh, it's literally just 20 days away. They're gonna have some a big reveal uh, apparently uh, on the Warner Bros. lot in Burbank, and it's gonna be about HBO Max. So is this where we're gonna have some um, special uh, you know announcement in terms of uh, DC related content? Perhaps maybe they're gonna kind of do what Disney Plus is doing with their own little movies uh, with Loki and you know all, all these other stuff so are we gonna have that I mean where is this where we're gonna have star girl or something you know I know people are waiting for that star girl TV show um, it could have you know maybe Brandon Ralph will be a kingdom come Superman in his own series or something uh, you know or maybe swamp thing is gonna come back you know something like that or maybe even the Snyder cut who knows maybe they're gonna announce the Snyder cut on October 29th uh, but uh, I don't know. But I, I, I'm just uh, just really interested in this date um, because I've been hearing a lot about ending of October, beginning of November, um, something about HBO Max. And uh, so I looked it up and I found this article. And I don't remember if I even read this article back then. But but it, it, it has it now. This is on deadline. You can go ahead uh, and, and check it out in the description below uh, in regards to HBO Max. But uh, this could be a new thing for just the future of entertainment, just the future of everything, right? And and a possible future for you know uh, movies like the Snyder Cut. Uh, if they don't want to release something like this, which it should. I mean, I really Justice League really should uh, be in theaters. I mean, it's been two years. 
Although it feels like three, because I've been waiting for, you know, Snyder's cut of, like, the Justice League Snyder cut uh, since uh, since BVS ended. Since Batman v Superman, the credits rolled after you see the dirt flying up from the casket of Superman, possibly alive, and I know he's alive. I've been waiting for Justice League for a long time, a long time, and we still haven't got the Justice League that we wanted to get. Uh, and uh, it, next month, it's going to be like the two-year anniversary since Justice League 3 year of counting the ending of BVS um, in 2016. And uh, I, I hope, you know, I really hope it just comes out already. I really am. You may be thinking like, well, why would you come out? Why, what, what would you talk about after the Snyder Cut would come out? Well, when the Snyder Cut comes out, I'll probably talk about the Snyder Cut, like all the different aspects of it, and uh, you know, maybe champion the air cut or something. But I, I am pretty tired. Uh, I am, uh, I am ready. Uh, to open up that Power Rangers channel. I am ready uh, to talk about Army of the Dead. I am ready to talk about other movies. I am ready uh, to have time to go into uh, other things, more Godzilla, more, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, and, and it's just because they, they interest me. I mean, Ad Astra was one of the greatest movies uh, this year for me. Uh, Joker, of course, one of the greatest movies. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, things like that. And would it be nice to just get into the flicks version of ping pong flicks not that i don't want to talk about snack i really do but it it is uh there's a lot uh and i can't wait uh for it to come out and so warner brothers i don't know if you're listening but warner brothers if you could just do us all a favor uh since uh justice league uh the second year this is a two-year two anniversary of Justice League's release. It's coming up in November. Would it? Would, could you be a peach and just <laughs> uh, could you just announce the Snyder Cut or even say something about the Snyder Cut uh, this coming uh, November or or even on October 29 if you see fit on Warner Brothers a lot in Burbank. I don't care. You don't have to make a big deal about it. You can just sh flash it on a screen. This is what's coming out uh, with with uh, the HBO Max package. Um, and look, oh look, there's a uh, director's cut of Justice League, by the way. Next question. You know, it, it could just be as simple as that. And well, no. Well, no. That is that it has happened. So um, I, I hope something happens. I really do. Um, and, and I'm not trying to hype up anything like this i'm just it's just getting to the year of the second year anniversary we've been fighting this for two years three if you counted um since bvs uh and, and i'm ready to get some kind of acknowledgement from warren brothers from Ann sarna from all that we'll continue to fight if it doesn't but uh, it would be a great a perfect just a at most perfect opportunity uh, to uh, kind of talk about it, to actually acknowledge and actually say something about the Snyder Cut, you know, uh, and, and give, you know, Zack Snyder and the cast and crew their due. There's a lot of talent that was been missing from the movie, and and they need to get that back. They need to be able to show that, uh, put that on their resumes <laughs> to show that this is the movie they worked on, and this is the movie that this scene is what they worked on. Uh, this this uh, acting part is what they worked on. They were brilliant in it, uh, and it would be great to show this in their their reel or something, so that they can get um, you know more opportunities in, in the in show business, right, or something, you know. Um, but all together, I think um, it's time. I think it's time HBO Max. Uh, I think it's time Warner Media. I think it's time Warner Brothers. However you want to release this thing, I don't know. But please, think about it. November. November 2019, let's do it. Release the Snyder Cut of Justice League. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.